So, Zach, is Tom Brady? Oh, it hurts to say it. Is Tom Brady the GOAT officially? And welcome, everybody, to another episode of Breaking Down the Tape. Uh, this is, again, your host, uh, Zach, and over there is Hector, as you can see. And, and I'm chomping down on A. If you don't know it now, go get yourself some White Castle Burgers. If you don't With know, you know. And the chicken ring put inside. You gotta do it. See, now we've got to get Yingling and White Castle to sponsor us. Um, so... Th- this week, obviously. <laughs> so this week, obviously, we're coming to you a day after Super Bowl Fifty Five. We will get into that today. Uh, first, we'll have around the world of sports, and then we actually have a super special guest, former NFL tight end Hakeem Vallis, will be on today with us, um, doing us a huge solid, hopping on here with us. Hell yeah. um, so uh, Hector, and then like I said before, we'll be talking about the the Super Bowl. So Hector, shut us off with around the world of sports, brother. All right, so what around the world of sports? Um, I'm going to start off with the NHL. NHL have been going on a few weeks now, a couple games going on. They're going on strong. Um, Zach kind of jinxed it last yeah, week man. a little bit. Yeah, sorry. Um, saying how they were going so well and whatnot. They're having a few hiccups with COVID, a few teams delaying some, uh, um, getting games delayed or postponed. Right. Um, so. Just be aware of that. Um, Besides that, the rest of the league has been well, has been going on the way it should. But there has been a few hiccups that I've seen. I want to say it's like the Wild, the Sabres, and the Devils haven't played a game in a week. There's been like 33 total games already postponed. Um, So I didn't mean to jinx y'all. I was trying to compliment you and then, you know. And then, and then Zach even jinxed it even more because before we jumped on air, he looks up and he's like, oh, shit, the Rangers are down to the Islanders. Like, you know, you know what, what, Zach? It's not my fault. Bad. It's not my <laughs> fault. They were they were doing good until I set up all my stuff for this. <laughs> they were It was a scoreless game <laughs> until I go ahead and hop on this. Right. Uh, but, Let's keep it rolling here. Uh, Now we're going to jump on over to the MLB side. With the MLB side, first and foremost, rest in peace to Pedro Gomez. He was a broadcaster who mostly did baseball for over 35 years of his career. He uh, brought, um, I'm not going to say broadcasted. He, uh, how do you say it? Uh, Que se dice como? Que se dice, uh, he wrote about it and was involved with about, or, and, right. and, and, you know, yes, he did broadcast a few, sure, sure. but not all in detail. Like some he broadcast and some he scouted, some he did. He didn't right. He's been involved in baseball. In, yeah. in over 25 world series Wow. in his 35 year career. Wow. Um, wow. He was a good dude. ESPN loved him, and, right. and MLB will will miss him. So, and Rest he was only fifty eight. He was only fifty eight. It's a shame. On the other side of MLB, Trevor Bauer went around and completely looked at the Mets and said, "Yeah, I'll help you build a dynasty." And then turned around and like like best friend, knife in the back. Don't yep. care about you. He um, trolled the Mets, man. He was giving out assigned Trevor Bauer Mets hats from his mm. website. And then, like, an hour later, it's like, nah, I'm going to take my talents to the West Coast. Sorry. Dude signs a, a two year, hundred and or three year, hundred and two million dollar deal. He's making over $40 million each year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he has an opt out after the first season. Yeah. Mind you. Yeah, he has I, he has the opt out. It's not a team opt out. It's, it's his opt out. Right. 
Hey, good business on his end, man. Uh, and I put this in the notes, and anyone who's paying attention to what's going on in baseball right now, just let's not even play the season. Make the rings for the Dodgers, because that's who's winning. And I'm sorry, but Yankees fan would love to think they have a chance, but hey. just make the rings. Just make the rings already. It, it's hey. There's no point. Zach, don't stamp A. Hey. Cause just uh, not too long maybe ago, I'll, you, maybe I'll jinx them too. No, not too long ago, you were rooting for the Padres. So don't you go about your word. That doesn't mean I'm not rooting for the Padres. I still just like Tatis Jr. Just the other day, you I, were saying build the rings for the Padres. All right, just because I've known for inflammatory comments doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you eat your white castle over there, you fucking mook. <laughs> Talk to me about the NBA, goddammit. So with the NBA, first off, LeBron James, congrats to him. He passed Will yeah. Chamberlain for third all-time scoring well over 12,000 points. I'm not going to get into all the jibber-jabber. I'm not in the mood of looking into exactly how sure. many points he has. It's just a metric fuck ton. You can do it yourself. So, <laughs> Google's a thing that you all have. Sorry. Facts. You probably already heard half of this shit on ESPN. You probably don't give a fuck about what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> You're here for the football. Don't worry. We'll get there. <laughs> um, but congrats to him. He's been in the league a very long time. And he's still rocking. And he's doing very well with the Lakers. So, I'm going to give him some congrats on that. Um, on the other end, there was a controversy with the Brooklyn Nets. And Durant. Yeah, you know, you sent that to me in our in our pre-show, and I, I don't really know what you're talking about. Okay, so with Durant, the man goes out, uh, warm-up, I believe. I believe it was a warm-up. They come to him and say, mind you, he already tested negative on three tests. Right. Before the game. Right, right. So they come to him and say, A, I think this guy was positive. Oof. He goes back. And because he was near him or whatever. So he goes back. He gets cleared for the game. Right. Mind you, he gets cleared for the game minutes before the game. So he doesn't start the game. Right. It was his first career off the bench start in 817 matches. Like, he started every career game in his career. This is the first game he had to come off the bench. That's crazy. So he comes off the bench. Because obviously he, he didn't test positive. The guy, whoever, yeah, didn't. They, they cleared him. Okay. He was good or whatever. He comes off the bench. And then third quarter, they find out that the guy that he was near or had contact or whatever was positive. So they come out and say oh. they got to pull Kevin Durant out Again. the game. Oh, out the game. He's upset. He understands. He leaves the court, but he was very upset. Everyone, sure, is, you know, sounds their frustration or whatnot. Sure, now, but that's just it. That kills me. Like, I at this point, this is where I say this is a, this is just people making up their own fucking rules and bullshit of COVID. You're allowed to do so much shit in the NBA, and you're allowed to do so much shit in the world of sports. Look at the Super Bowl. Right. They did all this shit all season. I, I, the first thing I did was look at Christie. First thing I did when I saw the Super Bowl start was look at Christie, and I said, all this COVID shit, and that is a jam Pack stadium, and I guarantee you, nobody is listening to COVID protocols. They had, uh, I think it was like twenty five thousand fans, and then like thirty five thousand cardboard cutouts or some shit like that. But no, I hear what you're saying. It's it's the the frustration comes from. Um, what's good for the goose isn't good for the gander, right? Like, some people get to do this, some people get to do that. We're going to treat it like this only during this moment and for this player and for you this telling team. Me no but in team, this, right. you telling me no team in the entire season can have more than, well, it, it didn't take until the last few games of the season to have, well, like, the Buffalo Bills have, like, 8,000 fans in a stadium. Right. They're going to go and pack a stadium at the last game of the season with almost, uh, uh, what, 75 capacity, 50, 50% capacity? Yeah, some shit like that, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, man. The the It's money talks. I mean, that's what it all boils down to, right? It's what it all always boils down to is money talks. 
<laughs> and Yingling walks, apparently. <laughs> nah, um, Yingling trickles down my throat with such ease. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I'm actually a little salty that I don't have any. I was nursing quite uh, a bit of a hangover this morning, so I don't know if I want to. But uh, I didn't. Press I didn't. Again. I didn't know how to really feel about the Durant situation sure. and how that affected him. You know what I mean? Because right. Because at the end of the day, they pulled him out of the game. And then the Nets end up losing that game. Right, right. Ha- you know, that demoralizes your team. Your star player gets pulled out the game, some bullshit like that. And then, you know, you know, it. it, it as much as people don't want to understand it, superstition shit is real. Well, that and it's, it's a in whole... Sports, especially in sports. Well, that and it's a whole momentum swing. I mean, I agree with you with the mentality of superstitions and, you know, set patterns and stuff, but it's a whole... One of your star players now is removed from the court. I mean, this isn't some, you know... Uh, but no name, backup, whatever. This Kevin, Kevin Durant. Right, right. I'm so, sorry, but after LeBron leaves, Kevin Durant is pretty much probably going to hold the crown for a little bit. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Um, but And you know what? That's a great transition point, too, speaking of holding the crown. You know, and, and obviously I've said it a hundred times, I'm not the world's biggest NBA person. I try and throw on a game when I can, when I'm home and not watching My Little Pony with my five-year-old. Um, but LaMelo Ball, man. I feel like all I hear is LaMelo Ball. So, am I, talk to me, am I supposed to feed into the hype? Is this kid the prince? Is he going to be the future? Like, talk to me. So, with LaMelo Ball, um, if no one's really figured it out, this is what I'm just going to say right now. And I said what I said. It's the first I said it was said of the day. Um, LaMelo Ball is going to have a bet. One, Everyone knows it. It's going to be, have a better career than his brother. But two, like, the man is going to revamp any team he has been put. Like, if he, if he doesn't spend his whole career with the Hornets, whatever he does, he's going to be an all-time player in the, in, in the NBA. Okay. Watch this guy. He's okay. putting up true numbers, and he's still he's has he's not a starter yet for the Hornets. He's not a starter. Okay. He's coming off the bench, and people are saying that he should be a starter. And I see what the Hornets are doing, and Michael Jordan's doing. They're building this man, and sure. he's good. He's way better than his brother. He's way better than what his family has built him up to in a hype in the BBB brand. Right, right. This man is a real deal. Watch his passes. Watch his films. His his shot is way better than and right. and just like any. Brother, duo, trio, whatever. It's always the middle or younger brother that's better than the oldest one. Yeah. This yeah. kid. This kid's the real deal. Watch this guy. Watch All right. This guy. All now. Right. I got it. And before you get into it, because I, I want to give you your time, and I'm just going to shut up and sit back and let you do your thing. We got to keep it to two minutes, man. I want to give Hakeem all the time in the world. I got so you. keep it to two minutes and then tell me about your New York Knicks, baby. Yeah. All right, with the New York Knicks, gotta hit him, gotta him, gotta hit him. One, I'm gonna hit it again. Their defense, their defense. They've been de- dwindling a bit, but now, they're, but they're still top five defense. They're doing great. They're losing to they and I and I understand they're losing key matchups to teams that they should lose to right now. They should lose to. Teams right. that are winning, the Clippers, Sixers, Celtics, they lose to those teams. But they are battling and winning teams that they should. And then they're still, you know, you got those messes and matches. I love it, though. They got the defense going. R.J. Barrett has proven to start being more consistent. Randall is an R-star. And no one has gone out there and voted. I just did it the other day. Go on NBA.com slash vote and I'm sorry, Julius Randle should be an all-star. Vote that man an all-star. He has held that team down. He's the powerhouse of that entire system and organization. Um, besides that, I mean, go Knicks. I mean, fuck. I mean, why? You are you not the, and, and, okay, to end the note, a lot of people are fighting it right now. They signed D. Rose. Yeah, they signed yes. D Rose. He played for them in 2016. He played very well with them. He revamped his career and then left. They didn't want to resign him. They brought him back because Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau coached him when he was an MVP. Coached him again when they went to the Timber when he went was traded to the Timberwolves. Do not sleep on Derrick Rose, even though he's an older player with a younger team. I'm just saying he will help these guards. 
All right. And that's that. Hey, uh, and I just want to touch on that. It's crazy that we call Derrick Rose an older player. I feel old because I remember when he was a young player <laughs> and it yeah. felt like only a couple of years ago. But he's actually um, still older than us. No, yeah, for sure. Uh, so with that being said, that's around the world of sports, guys. Um, listen to whatever cool interlude I'm about to put in and uh, we'll have Hakeem back, uh, Hakeem Valles on when we come back. Welcome back, guys. Like I said, uh, we've got Hakeem Valles, former uh, NFL tight end, on here with us. Um, we're going to be asking him some questions, interviewing him a little bit. And then uh, what better way to talk about the Super Bowl than having somebody who's played in the NFL on with us? Uh, oh, so, real. Hakeem, uh, say hello to Breaking Down the Tape fans and uh, take a moment to plug your uh, social medias and stuff, man. Breaking down the tape, Hector, Zach, appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, Hakeem Vallis, you catch me on TikTok at Hakeem Vallis and uh, Instagram, HawkVallis80. I'm not going to lie, hearing you say your last name makes me really, really happy that I've been saying it right because I've been stressing <laughs> out about that so much. Man. Everybody fucks it up. It's really good. <laughs> All right, man. So just a little background about you, and tell me if I'm wrong about anything. You were playing wide receiver in uh, in college at Monmouth before you transferred, what, like two years in to tight end? That's transferred my senior year to tight end. Senior year. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, something that's going to come up later is you studied, you majored in business administration, correct? Uh, business with a concentration in real estate. Yep. Oh man, you're killing it. I am apparently awful with my research. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, so, so man, you know, tell us, tell us about your time in college. What's, what's it like playing college ball? Um, I mean, I was trash to be honest at first. You know, I, was, <laughs> I was a bench player. I rode the fucking bench my first three years. So I, I, I it, it, it was, I was an entrepreneur at the same time. I was, okay. the, the, the girl I was dating. Her dad had a house flipping business and we flipped like 10 houses up in North Jersey. Okay. Um, and then I started an iPhone repair business and I was fixing like three to four phones a day. So like I was busy as shit. Like it was, so I, I, mean, I wasn't on the field either. So and I got, I got sure. hurt a bunch hammies broke my elbows. Okay. My shoulders. And then senior year I made that move from receiver to tight end. Um, first game got my first catch in my college career. Second game got my first touchdown and then started every game after that. Hell yeah. Good for you, man. Good for you. Now are you a are you a a Jersey man? Oh yeah, I'm a Jersey. I'm Jersey through and through, bro. I'm from through South Jersey. And... Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm like I'm like I'm like 15 minutes from Philly. Okay. Well, I'm in St. Louis right now, but I'm from uh, I'm from I'm from uh, where I'm from. People say they're from Philly. Like I don't play in Philly. Do, right. Do, right. Do you still do you still uh, uh, come up and visit your hometown? Bro, all the time. My, my parents are literally, they're going to go be here in the next two hours. They're oh, driving, they're, oh, they're, they're still up from there. Jersey to here right, like, right now. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and that's I, awesome. I, yeah, I was, I was there for about a month and a half through Thanksgiving, like, through, okay. like Christmas. Um, so, yeah, I'm always, my whole family's East Coast and New York City. There Fuck you go. Yeah. God bless your parents for driving that drive because I used to live out in Missouri. I used to live out in Rolla, deeper in. Okay, and, yeah. uh, that a, is it's an it's awful drive. drive. Yeah. Yes. Just, the worst part is honestly the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Just, yes, it oh is. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Hector, what you don't understand, it's like literally three roads. That is it. You literally do not need directions. Just yeah. head west. <laughs> just get, that just is go it. West. Just west. Down, let's say west. Yeah, you're on the Pennsylvania Turnpike for all of Pennsylvania, which is a huge ass state. And then what is it like eighty or whatever it is? Well, oh, dude, wow, I like, travel oh, half of Pennsylvania just trying to go to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> yeah, I think it turns into uh, seventy and seventy. You can take 70, seventy all the way into Missouri. Yep, yep, yes. Um, oh, good. You still pronounce it like an East Coaster, uh, not um, like that Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Shit threw me off out there, man. Um, Missouri. Yeah, yeah. I told him I was like, "Don't you realize that it's it has an R I at the end?" Not an a. <laughs> like, oh, you're not from here. No, I am not. We're from where you <laughs> real. <laughs> uh, so, what's the uh, the transition like going from college to the NFL? Like, is it like they say? Like, like is it the, is all the hype really what it is? Yeah, yeah. It's uh. <laughs> 
take the best player, you and yourself. I don't know when you guys played football. Best player. Oh, we did. Ever, Hell yeah. The best player you've ever seen in your entire life. You've ever seen growing up in your entire life is below average in the NFL. Jesus. And once you're there, it's not necessarily the talent that's where things are different. It's it's all mental. It's confidence and it's unconscious competence. Like people, once you can get to a place where the game slows down and you can walk around with the level of swagger because you're confident versus someone who was five star in high school and all all conference in college but once they're on the big stage they shit their pants Mm -hmm. and that takes away from the athletic aspect to it but the mental aspect of it is that important because when you can function when you can function you know by the how do i explain it almost like by the half a second like knowing what your role is what you know pre-snap you're looking at Three cues. I'm looking at this DN, this Sam, and this safety. If this guy goes, my entire route, route combo changes. But if right. he doesn't go, and if they're not in man and they're in zone, my entire route combo changes. And if you can't think that fast because you don't know your shit and you're not confident enough, it shows. And people, and because there's the level of film and detail compared to like college is so much deeper. Sure. Everything is getting pointed out. They called pin- out. Yeah. I was going to say and, they uh, pinpoint but, everything. Hundred percent, but it's all it's all like because like there's not much difference from a talent level of like an Odell Beckham and another receiver, but when it comes to confidence, he's a hundred times more confident than you, and that's why he'll be better than you on the field and on Sundays. Okay, all right, and Hell yeah, yeah, tell us Hell about yeah. your, <laughs> tell us about your time in the NFL, man. So what was it like for you? Uh, it was cool. I mean, it was uh, it was crazy. You know, it was had a nice three year career. Um, when I came in, you know, I was super, super serious. You know, January of 2016, I went like LeBron James, zero dark 30 mode. when I started <laughs> training, like lost my girlfriend, all that. And, right. uh, once I got in shit, like my first couple weeks in, you know, when we had OTAs, I, uh, separated my shoulder. First day of OTAs, like I had a diving catch on like a play action play. Sure. And separated my shoulder. I hit the ground. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't even feel my hand. Oh no. But I'm like, fuck, I'm not coming out. Fuck that. <laughs> and I go back to the, to, the, to the huddle. And like, I have like a, they call it a D route, but it's like a flat route. Sure. Um, and I'm like, no shot. I'm getting the ball here. Literally, of course, you know, fucking they, they throw it to me, <laughs> and I literally can't lift my other arm, but I snag it with one hand and just tuck it and keep going. I'm like, fuck yeah, I did that. And, <laughs> but like, I'm like noticeably and visibly hurt, and the sure, to pull me aside and take me out. But my, my coach came up and was like, yo, coaches were happy that you stayed in that, that second play and did that. I'm like, fuck yeah, like not even thinking about it though, like, like you know, in, in, the, in the moment, and uh, right. So that that was that was cool, and then it's hard, you know. When you're an undrafted dude, the the politics of the NFL is different. It's not like it's it's like anything else, but it's you're dealing with millions of dollars and egos on top of that. And you know, when you're an undrafted dude, you're at the you're at the bottom of the barrel, so you gotta wildly humble yourself. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I was I, I wasn't shit in college, which definitely helps. I naturally had that chip on my shoulder. Right. We're right. talking about guys who were the best player in their school. Getting A list treatment, you know, some guys at different schools don't even have to go to class. They get private tutors because they're such a distraction. Yeah. But now they're in a, a big fish of, you know, a whole bunch of other sharks and they might be undrafted or a low round draft pick. And it's it's a level of humbling yourself in that sense. So with me it was it was easy because I was already used to it. Um but you know, that that first year I was on the grind. My my Right, right after my first camp, I went to the practice squad. I think it was like four or five weeks in. Darren Fells had uh, gotten a stinger and was going to be out for two weeks, and they brought me up for a Thursday night football game. And then I was up the rest of the season. There you go, man. That's awesome. Good for you. That was fucking great. Like, but it was wild. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was a lot. You know. It was. It was a lot. You know, all right. All right. So this is. This is. All right. So like, most of the time, Zach. Sits here 
And he does his brainstorming shit, and he comes up with a lot of the questions and shit, and I stick my one or two questions in. This is my one question. What is it like? Especially, like, this is, this is a kid's dream. This is, this is what, the, what kids strive for. What is it like coming out that first time into a stadium of just thousands and thousands of just cheering fans? Yeah, that shit is nuts, bro. <laughs> it's, uh, it's as nuts as you think. Um, Arizona was a little bit nice because you got to warm up to it. Because sure. our, our camp was at our stadium. And okay. we would, uh, half of the state, like literally an entire half of the stadium was filled with fans every practice. So you kind of got that used to having someone, or, like I went to Monmouth. We had a 6,000 person stadium. Like it was nothing sure. compared to, it was apples to oranges compared to the league. Um, but man, like that, I remember that, that first time in that tunnel, I'm, <laughs> I remember sitting there. I, I got, I'm fucking, it's, it's a preseason game that I'm probably not even going to play. I think it's the first preseason game. And I got like, so? my, my helmet <laughs> strapped on, got my mouthpiece in. Like I'm locked and loaded. I'm focused. I'm freaking out. And like well, this vet comes up to me and it's like, yo, bro, take your helmet off. Um, he said, we don't get many opportunities to show our face. So right in time like this, take your helmet off. When you're in the sideline, take your helmet off for like marketing and branding purposes. And like, it's funny. I got, that was like literally first I game. know back, back in high fucking... school, they're like, keep your helmet on. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see your ugly ass mug. Take, take the helmet off and, and, you know, try and get camera time because unlike the NBA, you know, no one knows who the fuck's under the helmet at the end of the honestly, day. Honestly, um, honestly. But that, I remember just, you know, shit in my pants and then, uh, Heading out to that tunnel, it's a crazy, it's a, it's a wild, wild feeling when you're in a. I haven't been to many NFL games, but you get to see it from the outside. Like when you, like as a fan, like understanding everything that goes into it and understanding what's going on under the stadium, like from a player and a mindset standpoint, it's a lot. It's it's a it's a hell of an experience, but you have to try and relax because you got 150,000 people texting you because sure. they maybe saw you like during the game or something like that. Sure. You got people talking about tickets. You got people hitting you up about everything. It's, it's just a lot. Um, Damn. That's a lot. If that makes sense. But it's, but if you can relax in those moments, have confidence in those moments and know what the fuck you're supposed to do in those moments, that's, right. that's how you can become dangerous. Well, like you said, it's it's all mental. I mean, even from the you know from the second that that came up to you and said, "Hey, man, take your helmet off," you know, do as much branding as you can for yourself. You know, it's it's slowing that game down even from just walking out and prepping for it. That's that's crazy. I can't imagine that that feeling would ever wear off, like it ever. Does a little bit. It what? Does. It actually definitely does. like the really? one feeling that doesn't go away is like the eight to nine seconds of when you storm onto the field, like six minutes before kickoff, because like you get a lot more. It's a funny thing. A funny story about NFL pregames that people don't realize there's a logistical nightmare when it comes to pregame shits. I bet <laughs> you got 53 grown ass men who all need to take you. You remember before high school or college game, how much you had to take a shit, just like the natural nerves of game day shits. You might take three, four shits on a game day, but now you got 53 dudes and you might be on the, the away team. You know, I'm trying to think of some locker rooms like the San Diego chargers had like fucking two stalls in their back. What? And like, you got fucking 40 grown ass men, like all in line waiting to take a shit. And, and you know, like, linemen take shits like elephants too. So let's be Bro, real. Yeah, you're talking motherfuckers <laughs> supplemented out. So it just smells like fucking it's the devil's asshole. Like it is. But like. Now that's a book title. The Untold lot. Stories <laughs> and NFL Plumbing. <laughs> Yo, for real. When you're a rookie, you're stressing out about everything. You're trying to, you can see like the first 15 plays, like the, all the plays that you might be in on. So you're fucking studying. Plus, you, you plus, plus, as a rookie, you probably got to wait till the last to use the shitter. A hundred percent. You're like, all right, <laughs> all right. Matthew Stafford, of course you can take a shit. <laughs> Warm and uncomfortable. And yeah, great. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, 
it's just something that's just not talked about how much like <laughs> how many like you're like you got different stadiums you know where there's like a little private bathroom like oh i'm gonna go sleep hey, over here and go take hey. a shit I got that right there for a reason. I know how it is to have to succumb to the people below, uh, above you. That's real. At least you could shit in the woods, man. My man couldn't shit in the hallways. <laughs> yeah, right. It's TMZ, right? Oh, yeah, that that's that that that's that's just something like having to figure like you work that into your routine and all that type of stuff you're nervous and you got like okay Enjoy. i know in 17 minutes i gotta be out in the field okay in 14 minutes i'll be on the field then you're rechecking the time you're rechecking everything because you just don't want to fuck up anything because you're a rookie and you're nervous and all that type of stuff but as that goes on and like that part becomes way more relaxing like pregame like you're just kicking it you're not like in your head the whole time like you kind of get your own like routine going and then that's when awesome. you come back and the whole team storms out like that's 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 kind of you're back in the zone zone. That's cool. That's awesome, man. Um, so everybody has a favorite team growing up, right? So who was your favorite team growing up being in New Jersey? Die hard. Die hard. Eagles, Do it. Man. Oh, boo. I bleed, oh. I bleed green and white. All right. Well, I was hoping I was hoping the for green the other green and white. Jets. I was yeah. hoping the no, other no, green no, and white. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're pathetic I'm Jets fans. You got to leave us alone, man. I respect it. I respect it. I so, yeah, I believe green and white. I get it. I get it. So, especially saying how passionate you are about being an Eagles fan, what's it like being on another team, but still rooting for your team. You know what I mean? Like I've always I, I never, that. I never got to play the Eagles, which is interesting. Um, okay, but how do I explain it? It's uh, you know, it's weird sometimes. My my seatbelt guard has like an Eagles thing on it, and it, like I bought my car used, and it just happened to have it already there. I'm like, I'm oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so perfect. So, like, God, that was one God thing, fate. But yeah, my friends, like my teammates coming to my house and I've got this, this Eagles blanket, like layered over my love sack. And they're like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? But like, they don't care enough. Sure. That sense, Cause you know, people on every team in that sense. So it's like, not sure. a, it's not a, it's not that big of a deal, but like if I would have had the opportunity to play at Lincoln financial field, like that would have been the super bowl for me. I think oh, I'm I, sure. I, I, Think I would think, and I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I would. I've never been in the NFL. I th- I would never go to the NFL as much as I would love to have been to the NFL. Um, I think once you get to that level, I think your favorite. I don't know. Is it true? Like the, your favorite team got kind of gets pushed to the side. Yes and no. Like I <laughs> like do, like when you're playing. Like I mean, I don't know. I feel like if I was in the NFL. And if I wasn't drafted by the Jets or the Giants, going against them, like, it would be tough to, like, be like, damn, I really got to go out there and slay your ass. I, I mean, playing against the, that team, nah, you're going all out. But it's, it's, uh, like, I was never starstruck by anyone in the NFL. Really? Not st- I'm not saying starstruck. No, 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 I'm, I'm just saying your team. I'm just saying your team. by. I'm just saying your team. No, where where, where, where I'm going with this is I wasn't starstruck by anybody in the NFL. (coughs) I I was starstruck by two people. And I can't believe I can't think of his name. One, we had a guy on the IR my rookie year in Arizona who was a lineman back in the McNabb era. Okay. Um, And he was like, he was retired after my rookie year. He was former first rounder from Bama. What the hell is his name? I don't know why I can't think of his name. Um, We're going to look, him, Arizona, up, Zach. We're gonna look him up, Zach. We're going to look him up, Zach. Matthew, him. Pat Peterson with all these studs. And like I could give a shit. Like, obviously, it's super cool being around them. But like all I care about is like, holy shit, that's him. Then I go to then I go to Detroit. You know, I'm with Matt Stafford, Slay. I'm with all I'm with uh, some, some goats in Detroit. The only person I was starstruck by in Detroit was our assistant O-line coach, was Hank Fraley, who is okay. – of Eagles era, uh, right. like, Nab era offensive lineman, and every like literally every day I see him, I'm just like, holy shit, that's Hank Fraley. Like that's how diehard of an Eagle. That's like if you saw. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know how hardcore of a Jets fan you guys are, but I was on Clubhouse yesterday and I was chatting with Mark Sanchez. All right, that like, is kind of cool. For like twenty minutes, it was super. Like I'm not. I, I, I thought that was super cool. Like still being a Jersey. I'm like, yo, that'd be, that'd be dope. 
Because right, I'm not right. gonna lie, when Sanchez was taking them to the AFC Championship, we were we were in the prime of graduating high school. Yeah, well, Sanchez had <laughs> so a we were like, he had a we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're oh, yep. running that shit. Like, yep. <laughs> he, he had a short stint with the Eagles too. So I'm literally like shit in my pants on this clubhouse. Like, this is Mark fucking Sanchez. Like, what? That's cool. Um, but that that like that doesn't go away. So, but like it was like I, I was. With everything else, I didn't really like. It was cool, but I, I didn't really. I wasn't like shitting my pants over kicking it with Tyron Matthew or someone like that. If that makes sense. Sure, sure. So, we got to move through these questions a little bit faster. We want to make sure we have enough time for that NFL. Word, my so, bad. No, 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 so, not you, bro. No, no, You're good. not you. So what? So with everything that you had going on in the NFL, what what would you say was your? F- Favorite or like key moment that you would always like take away from everything from uh, tops it, it just tops it. <sighs> Moments. I don't know. It's usually for me. It's not the those small moments that you really remember. Where it, you, did you guys ever play this game? Like when you're growing up, like somebody looks at that, looks at that, <laughs> like, <laughs> your ass, like that. And so yep, my, yep. My uh, there's a tight end named Ifani Moma, really good dude, played for years. Um, but we were, I was usually the Y, and he would be the X <laughs> in a lot of situations. And we would always fuck around and practice, like in a flank set. Like, we're not even in a flank set, just any time in practice. I'm always just fucking getting them, like, all, like in every situation, like in the most serious situations. Then we're in the motherfucking heat of the battle, like in a fucking game. And that, like, we were both, kind of, we weren't both fucking up, but we were both, uh, I don't know, I don't remember what the situation was, but it brought us back, if that makes sense. Like, we were in a flank <laughs> set. I was the Y. He was flanked off of me, like, right behind me, um, like, right off my, like, one-to-one off my ass. And we communicate when we're in a flank set. Like, if we're doing, we have a route combo. It's usually, like, I go in, you go out. I go under, you go outward. Like, I'm going to pick, you do that, whatever. So we're usually, like, going back and forth, like, talking, like, before the snap goes. Right. And I'm like, Mo, Mo. And I'm like tapping my cleat, but I've got this on my cleat. It was a great, this is a random ass, but great moment. That was, I mean, I was four years ago. Um, that's awesome. That, that's something that I always definitely remember. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Great. That's, that's great. So actually, I want to skip ahead. We had a couple other questions, but I really want to give you time to talk about Perspective Global Media. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? So that's um, kind of what you're doing, you know, post-NFL alongside real estate, if I understand correctly. So kind of talk to us about that venture. Yeah, so Perspective, we're essentially a a TikTok consulting agency. Uh, We work with different brands, individuals, individuals. personalities, podcast hosts, athletes, and essentially help them get launched on TikTok um, from different, you know, we, we kind of work with people in different tiers, whether it's actually being the talent where we're running their account to just doing high level consulting from like an hourly type of basis, working with you and your media and marketing team. Um, and then we kind of have like a round table uh type of product that we also do. We're bringing a bunch of different business owners, brands that are in the same niche and kind of consult them in like a group type of setting. Um, but that's, you know, I, I've had perspective since 2019. We've done a range of different things. Uh, we pivoted into TikTok consulting about, damn, it's already February. Yeah. About four or five, five months ago or so, um, we pivoted into this space. And uh, it's been awesome. Uh, just it's been a, a super fulfilling, uh, super fulfilling, to say the least. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Is um, you know, since social media is always changing and and like you just said, you pivoted into TikTok, you know, I, I assume that you'll be planning on pivoting into something else when that becomes, you know, the big thing or uh for me it's I think TikTok is gonna be it's gonna have some longevity. I think it's got some legs oh, to it. Like really? on Instagram, okay. like a Facebook, hundred fifty percent. I think like the data is there, you know, a hundred million daily active users uh on the platform. 40% are above the age of 25. And then when you compare it platform to platform, you know, Facebook's daily average consumption time is 12 minutes a day. Instagram's is 25 minutes a day. And TikTok is 85 minutes a day. Wow. And 60% of TikTok users don't have Instagram. 
Really? Yeah. I, I mean, I just re... I'm not going to lie. I just restarted my Instagram. Right. What was it? Like, a couple months ago for the first time in, like, five years. Right, right. Instagram is... Uh, you know, Instagram's worth it. It's like the... The lunchroom. But yeah, I just matter. never... I, I'm not really big on posting pictures or, like, posting... Because you're like, ugly. Uh, yeah, that one, yes, and <laughs> two... And two, like, I'm just... Like, the what Instagram shows me, it's not really me. You know, I barely post anything. Absolutely. So, so when, when I think know. of content and posting, and this might be an unlock for you, I don't know if you have kids or not, um, but when it comes to content, I try and think about legacy. So forget about the audience and being cool and all that type of stuff. I think about this perfect case in point, not to get too emotional on you. If your great grandma had a TikTok account, you would watch every single video over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And your kids would watch it. Your kids, kids would watch it. Your kids, 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 kids would watch it. But digital assets didn't exist. Like, our great grandparents would smack us in the face if they knew how much we weren't taking advantage of these tools in the sense of we are going to be the patriarchs of our distant bloodline forever. Like when you look at your family tree, we will be on the top of it because everything before us is just pictures and videos unless they got converted into a digital type of you know piece of content. Having said that, most of us are leaving a bullshit PR version of ourselves legacy for our great, 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 great grandkids to know, but it's not even fucking you. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That's true. I think of content, fuck the audience. Like obviously the audience matters. Yeah. Try and bring value, but make but it you make it you because okay. you're leaving lessons and footprints for your kids. A lot of people are just kids. doing it for the clout and all that other, and all that other, bullshit. Or, just, or, just, or just trying to make it for the quick M like, watch this. Like, this is being recorded, right? Yep, yep. Like, Hi, Lucy. Like, that's my two-year-old's name. She'll watch this one day. Like, I have fucking chills, like, saying that because it's that's real. Cool. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that, I got you. that's an opportunity, that a perspective tweak that most people aren't thinking of when they think of content. So, like, post it all because you're leaving a digital f- just footprint, like, for your family. Like, fuck the audience again. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I got you. All right, man. Well, then let's let's get into the big thing here. I mean, like I said, we we record on Monday, so we are twenty four hours out from the biggest game of the year, in which nobody. I don't care if you pick the winner; that's fine. But nobody saw this happening the way that it did. Nobody saw a thirty one to nine Buccaneers win. Um, and if anybody tells me that they did, they're a bunch of liars, and I can't believe them. Um, so, I mean, leading into the game, history was already made in this game happening. This is the first time a Super Bowl team has ever been the home team in their own stadium. This is the first time we've had a female ref um, and the first time that we've had female, full-time female coaches. I know the first time that we've had a female coach was back when uh, San Fran played the Super Bowl a couple years ago, um, but this is the first time that they were full-time uh, staffers. So, the stage was already set for for a pretty great game in the first place, and then we come out to just dominance. I mean, not even on offensive side of the ball for the Buccaneers. Their defense came out. Todd Bowles called up a defensive game plan that just. I know, like, Jets fan, you were pissed. Off. Fuck, man! That's all I can. <laughs> Yo, what the thinking. hell happened? Where was that defense? No, 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 no! I give him credit. He still gave us a top five defense. He did he when did. he was there. Some people are great coordinators and just not good head coaches, man. You know, it's it's totally different set of skills. I, I hope that's the case for Matt Patricia. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> Not to throw a few bits in there, but let's be real. Just so much <laughs> Damn, that's a whole episode. <laughs> that's a whole episode. Uh, so, so. Tell me, you know, I've got a whole bunch of, you know, obviously stats and takeaways and stuff like that here. Um, but tell, tell me, you know, tell us, tell the fans your takeaways from the game. 
Yeah, I mean, I I think you hit the nail on the head of no one was coming in that this was going to be a blowout like that. I, I I put it on, I think a month ago, I put up a piece of content saying that they were going to win. But I thought it was going to be a close game if the Bucks won, and I thought it was going to be a blowout if the Chiefs won. Um, right. But I thought, I was like, you'd be stupid. To, you wouldn't bet, I mean, basketball and football are completely different, but you wouldn't bet on Michael Jordan. You wouldn't bet against Michael Jordan game seven in Chicago. No. So no. why would you bet against no. Tom fucking Brady? Like that's that's the punchline. Winners fucking win. Like that's that's yeah. as simple as that. And I, <laughs> go ahead, heck. I gotta fight you because I'm like being a Jets fan. We just always will go against Tom Brady. <laughs> it's in our blood, man. Because we could have had right. him. I we could have had him. Yeah, I mean, that game was. I mean, you just watched surgical. I mean, we watched. You know, we watched firsthand surgical precision by the, our nation's top doctor. He, well, uh, it's true. It, was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful to see him executing on offense. It was beautiful seeing Tom Bowles from a defensive standpoint. Like they, you know, a whole bunch of people complaining about the refs and all that type of stuff. Sure. <laughs> There's bad calls, but there's still legit calls at the end of the day. But sure. you can't take away from the interceptions thrown. You can't take away right. from the pressures mm-hmm. and the sacks and the like. The drop the passes. Calls. Yeah, the drop. Do the bad calls mm-hmm. have to do with the fact that you guys did not score a touchdown? And Brady was getting in Matthew's head hard. He was on. He was in his ass. I like. He was that. all up in his shit. And after so, the second call, it was over for him. Brady had him. Yeah, I like. I like quarterbacks and safeties go through a straight chess match the entire game. So oh he, yeah, he was dope and Matthew and, and I have loved Matthew. And I've told Zach from when Matthew had, from that Honey Badger got drafted. I wanted the Je- the Jeffs. The Jets were actually projected to go for him, but because of his dilemmas and his right, bullshit, his off the they, field issues, they, he fell down. And I wanted them to go for him, and I knew he was going to be great. And that man, he is great. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, when I was practice squad in Arizona, it was literally I was whoever the tight end who was that week against fucking him every fucking week until I, I got bumped. Ouch! Out. <laughs> it was cool though because I that I mean that that was my. Uh, I'd argue that's what got me good with the DBs in Arizona. My rookie year playing against uh-huh. them, like my entire, like we got Tyron Matthew, Dayon Buchanan, Tony Jefferson, Tyvon Lynch. Fucking. You guys had a squad. I'm not going to Kevin Minter was there from the Bucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty good squad. Yeah, it was it was a like, it was a squad squad, but like pra- like being on the practice squad was a motherfucker because you're playing against <laughs> Top guys, like, you're playing against guys like Bruce Arian should have won the Super Bowl in 2016. We just yep. like it was beautiful to see him do it though in 2021 because he did it with the same exact coaching staff, yeah. You know, and, and talking about Brady's day, I mean, you know, last week or two weeks ago, technically in the NFC Championship, he had three interceptions, and this week he doesn't come out and put out an amazing stat line. I mean, he went 21 for 29, only 201 yards, three touchdowns. Once, but I think the important stat line here is one sack, six pressures. That's it. He was only pressured six times a game to the fact the of the uh, line definitely did their thing. Yeah, and Mahomes was pressured 27 times a game. I mean, he was pressured more than he had completed passes. <laughs> Hunt, you had to give Tom Brady the MVP, sure. No, Devin, White, Devin White's the MVP of that game, though. There it is. I have yes. that in my notes. We were, uh, yeah, right. we were, we were talking you had, about you that. You had to give it to Tom Brady because it's, you know, it's. Fucking, I mean, he's the goat. He's the goat. He, he and he had a and he managed the game. And that's what it is. He managed the game well. He did yeah, what he had to Devin do White and then managed snubbed. it. Devin White. That game without Devin White does not happen. That motherfucker brought the energy from play one to the final fucking play. I, 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 for the first time in a long time, I would agree with like Stephen A. Smith, and I would give it to the entire D line of the Buccaneers. Like that D front just came out and this hard. And you got so I've never angry. seen I've never seen Maybe. Patty Mahomes like not know what the fuck to do. Yeah, that, and that's a, that's another thing. You gotta, I, I you know I always have a soft heart for the Chiefs because Andy Reid, diehard Eagles. You know you gotta show love for Andy. That's 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 Papa Bear right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Chiefs look, they looked like they just saw deer in headlights. Like they look like deer in yeah. headlights the entire like they were just like it was almost like a what the fuck type of feeling. Like I'm a yeah. superstar. Why like work? 
How exactly. dare you hit me? Right. Well, that was the thing. I mean, Mahomes was out there still being Mahomes. Like, Mahomes was Definitely. no two less Mahomes. Like, he was two throws away. Like, that's absurd. Two, two, Watching the best, him. two of the best throws of the year if they were catches. Here's the most ridiculous stat. So, I've, I, I hold on to one stat in my mind that I think is the most crazy stat, and that is that more people have walked on the moon than have touched home plate against Mario Mariano Rivera in the playoffs, right? My second now most crazy stat is Patrick Mahomes ran for almost 500 scrambling yards behind the line of scrimmage yesterday. Before throwing the ball, you know how exhausting that he is? ran oh, 497. Is I think what uh, the official looked, total is. He, That's, I'm pretty I'm, sure I'm, I'm using I'm, that stat in a TikTok. That's I'm pretty, using that stat. I'm pretty that sure. Is fucking wild. I'm yep. pretty sure he's a Jedi because the way that he yeah, was completely parallel to the ground, like he's he was floating, it, he's got and that through a complete yeah. yes. Fucking spiral dart, dart. and it you know smacked your man. Like it smacked him right in the square uh, of his he wasn't helmet. Expecting it. <laughs> no, 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 no. He wasn't. Don't tell me he wasn't expecting it because his hands went like this. <laughs> uh, we're gonna say uh, Pat Mahomes. The way he plays is back to what I was talking about before about confidence and unconscious competence. You remember playing backyard football with your homies. Like, you can make a dope ass throw like that when you're fucking around with your homies. For when sure. the game is moving that slow for you, you can do that type of shit. Like Odell Beckham <laughs> making catches like that. Like, like yeah, that's, yeah. that's the difference of Pat Mahomes and Nate Sudfeld. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So, so I have a quick question to throw in there. When, when guys are in their slump, is it the fact that they're letting the game speed up to the point that they're not comfortable instead of just letting it come to them that comfortably? It depends because there's so many factors that goes into it because the game speeds up as the momentum creeps. Like NFL is a game of energy. Yeah, it is. Like it's a game of energy. That's why an intercept, like a pick six will like a pick six can change everything with a game. A fumble can change everything in a game. An interception, like people were saying like like that Tom Brady, that he, the fact that he got that, that fumbled snap, like if they got that, that could have changed everything. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you're, it's, that's where short term, short term memory is dangerous. Like you have to have a short term memory. Like that's, that's what it is because it's Depending on the player, there's so many factors that go into it. If you're Larry Fitzgerald and you drop a ball, who gives a fuck? Right. Facts. If you're me and I drop a ball, if I drop another fucking ball, I better start. Like, if I drop one more, I'm done. Do you get what I'm saying? So now that compounded pressure, like my very first game, very first game, Thursday night football, fucking got the ball thrown to me right through my hands. Oof. And I'm just like, fuck. Very next play. Rub route concept with Larry. I set the pick. Larry gets the catch, runs for like 18, 20 yards or so. Offensive pass interference. Oh. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. But like, I remember like Larry coming up and just like shrug it off type shit. And like, I was so over prepared for that game that the game was actually like outside of those type of shits. Like I was freaking out. Like I was losing my fucking mind. Like Thursday night football has that extra camera that's following people on the field. So like, <laughs> so I'm sorry. literally like trying to run from the camera. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I literally know that they're on TV talking rookie. Akeem Valley. And his first NFL game is fucking up today. Documentary <laughs> 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 shit. Like, oh, I, I knew, shit. I, I, it was, I was like, fuck. But like after that, didn't even think about it the rest of the game because I was right. so in my zone and on top. I was so overly focused in like a good way, but I was right. almost stressed the fuck out in that sense. But it, it was uh, <laughs> to get out of those slumps. It's a lot, you know, it, it depends on, it depends on your level of preparation mixed with who are you? Because if you're, like I said, if you're Larry versus somebody else, then it's how big of a stage did you just fuck up? Did you just lose sure, the game? Yeah. Did you just, you know, throw a pick six with six minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Did you, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a lot of levels to it, but I think when those things happen, that's when you start second guessing yourself. Right. Because when you're, I mean, when you're a pro, you're a pro, like you've done everything that you're thinking about hundreds of thousands of times. But once you start second guessing how good you are, that's when you, you just, you're unraveling all the work that you already put in. Right. Facts. facts. That's Real, a good way to put it. Yeah, facts. Real quick then, before we wrap this up, do you think 
than, you know, talk about slowing the game down and getting in your head. This is the first time Mahomes has gotten his ass whooped like this for a very long time. Do you think that affects him going forward or this is be a short term memory because he's a god? I think there's he's, he has pressure. I don't know. It, pressure bursts pipes and pressure makes diamonds. Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't, that's a great question. I think, uh, I think he still balls. He's got it in that sense. I just right. hope he stays healthy. Yeah. Um, Cause that's going to definitely matter. Um, like he's, he's, he's a generational talent. And that, that was since day one. I remember I didn't really watch college football going in. Like, I don't know who the fuck is this guy from Texas tech? Like get the fuck out of here. And I was like, no, no, no. He's the next guy. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And I was like, <laughs> holy shit. He's right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so I, I, I think, uh, winners win. But he's up next. You know what I'm saying? Like winners win. Like I, I put out a piece of content talking about like Tom Brady was going to win because winners win. Everybody's like, oh, yeah. But what about Pat Mahomes? Winners win. I'm like, yeah. But we're talking about fucking Tom Brady versus Pat Mahomes, who won his first Super Bowl when Pat was fucking six. Six, right? You know <laughs> um, but I do think the consistency that's going along with what they've got going on in, in Kansas City is. It is something dangerous. If they can keep it all together, I don't know what this free agency looks like for them. I mean, if once once Brady leaves, Brady's not leaving. And, I'm, no, I'm saying no. once. I'm I'm saying once he does. Once he does. Let's say he leaves in three twenty years. years. Let no. Let's say he leaves in three years. Yeah. Patty Mahomes is only five years, six years in the league. Patty yeah, still got another fifteen years if he stays the way Brady was, healthy wise and everything. Obviously, he's paid. Um. He has another 15 years to try to catch up to Brady. I agree, but I think to try uh, to catch up to Brady. Now, will he? That's another story. But Brady, like the like, I mean, right now, like I don't think anyone ever does it. There's no way I see because someone. He's got too many other people to deal with. Like, what about Aaron? The Rodgers? only, the only, the only yeah. way I say, the only yeah. way, the only reason I see uh, uh, Patty Mahomes making a run is the fact of the age situation. Right now, Brady won his second ring at the age that Patty Mahomes would be next season. So if Patty goes out next season and wins a ring, they're on pace technically the same way if Patty goes out and plays another uh, uh, 20-year career and ends up pulling out a few before Brady ended up getting it. Because Brady won a lot late in his career. I think there's a lot of factors. So Pat Mahomes isn't the same guy without Aaron Andy Reid, in my opinion. Just like I don't think yeah. Sam Darnold is the same quarterback with the Jets. Just like I don't think Carson Wentz is the same quarterback without uh, what do you call it, the Eagles? But Tom Brady's um, Tom Brady. Tom Brady's fucking Tom Brady. Yeah, he's proven that. That's he's it. He's proven proven that. that. Tom Brady he's done pro- he Tom done Brady just did that. is absurd. Mm-hmm. I mean, Peyton, Peyton also proved he was Peyton. Peyton did the same shit. Not like this. Not like this. Not like Payton. this. <laughs> not not, not, not on the championship level. Just did. What Tom Brady just did, Jeff Bezos just fucking built Amazon over all these fucking years, and just walk, stepped down as CEO. You know, still on the still on the board and all that shit. What Tom Brady did is the equivalent of Jeff Bezos tomorrow announcing, "I'm starting a fucking toothbrush company," and turning it into a hundred million dollar company in the next yeah. year without yeah. like injecting a whole so, bunch of capital on bullshit so like that. There's been a lot of talk on ESPN that's been blowing my mind too. It's like. When it comes to, like, the all-time GOATs, like, are you, like, is it, is, is like, I don't know. Because people are saying, like, is he above Jordan? Is he above, like, Ruth? If he is, is two, he three above, peats. like. Two three-peats. You got to, you got to factor in the amount of time that Jordan didn't play. Jordan took off years. Mm-hmm. 
He only played seven. He only played seventeen years, and he took off two. So it would have been nineteen, and possibly an eight peat. Possibly, but like you said, it's all two, what ifs. Feet. It's all what ifs. Jordan, it's hard. It's like you got to. I don't know if you guys are statistics guys. Like yeah. I used to love statistics, but the Z scores is how you compare different sports. When you you know you can if you can compare a man and a woman's athleticism with a Z score, and it'd be interesting to see if anyone's done anything like that with uh, Brady versus Jordan. Brady, the thing about Jordan has so much more control. That's why Brady. It's almost greater what Brady did. You know sure. what I mean? Like, you can fucking take over a game as Michael Jordan. Offense, defense, both sides of the fucking okay. court. Okay. Versus Brady has the time he has to take advantage of yes. the time he's on the field and lead his team yeah. throughout practice and all that type of shit. And, like, and he has such a, a less, like, you know, you're nine months of practice for 16 Sundays. Yeah. The, the only reason I would put Brady under Jordan, and this is the only reason, the only reason. Is Brady is a great executive and general manager. He brings pieces around to him to make sure that he can make it to where he needs to be. Yes, to but. complete the game. Yes, Jordan. But. Jordan went out there, never asked for someone to be drafted, never asked for someone to be traded, never asked for anything. He got what he got and said, "I'm going to go and I'm going to win it with or without." Who is on my team? But what about Br- Brady? The fucking Super Bowls he won in, in, in New England with some of those the, some of those groups. He wasn't politicking, seeing if I can get Calvin Johnson in or some shit. He did it with. He turned Amendola into Amendola. He turned Wes Welker into Wes Welker. He turned. Gronk was a fucking beast. But Gronk was always the beast. Gronk was always a beast. That was awesome was always to see him ball out, too. Oh, hell yeah. Real. Um, He's a funny he, character. He did that. He fucking, in the AFC championship, that, like, put it this way. What was that dude saying? The white dude who scored right before the half, uh, number 10 or 11. What, in the Super Bowl just now? No, he scored in the AFC Championship. It was like right before the half. They think they're going to be conservative, and he just goes deep on a bomb. Left side oh, the oh Scotty Miller. Scotty Miller. Yeah, He's going to turn Scotty Miller into Scotty Miller, and he almost did when they did that little fake reverse during the Super Bowl. And if he would have fucking broke that, I promise you Scotty Miller would have been a household name. But like that's Brady's doing. If that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, yeah, that is true. No, you I get I get that. I get that. Yeah, it's you not know, like yeah. Brady was politic and like get me Scotty Miller. <laughs> you know what I'm right. 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 So when he did bring over, he did make Gronk come A B But why wouldn't you? Yes, but it's not it's not for even, net, really for net came because of him. Did he really make them come or is it nah fuck Brady's in Tampa? Let me get out there. It's like Stafford just left and All Marvin right. Jones is like yo but you can't say Brady was like yo like oh, well, gave, me, gave him that quick text Gronk. like yo you want to make it happen? <laughs> I mean if, if I'm Brady of course you're gonna do that though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's 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 Gronk. Tight end of the QB connection is different. All right, guys. We're going to have to end it there because we are short on time. So, Hakeem, um, A, thank you again so much for coming on. We've had a blast. Uh, but before I let you go, I want you one more time to run through all your socials, let people know where to find you, uh, get all of our listeners following you. Uh, Zach, Hector, appreciate you guys one having me. Enjoyed the interview. I'm breaking down the tape. Um, you guys can find me at like I said, TikTok, just Hakeem Vallis, um, Instagram, Hawk Vallis 80, and just hit me up whenever. Always down. Awesome. Thank you again, awesome, man. man. Awesome.